I love getting out into my garden at the start of a summer's day. The sun's coming out, it's warming up, and if it's getting warm outside, the one thing you know is that under glass in the greenhouse, the temperatures will soon soar. So my very first job of the day, it's the greenhouse. I've got to make sure it stays as cool as possible at the height of the summer day. Before I even have my cup of tea, first job of the day is to open up the greenhouse. The sun's coming up and I need to make sure that the temperature doesn't rise too high so the greenhouse needs ventilation. I'm lucky because I've got double doors at the front so I can open these up to let the air flow freely. I've also got roof ventilators, some automatic ones which will open when it gets hot and close again when the conditions get cool. So these help to keep the airflow going as well, flowing through the greenhouse. I've got louver vents in the side, so it's going to open up one of these as well. And I've got some louvers in the side, so wherever you've got ventilators in your greenhouse, open up as many as you can on a hot day because it will just keep the air flowing and keep the conditions much cooler. And now I've got the ventilators open, I've got to think about watering. And I water in a number of different ways. I'm just going to grab my hose, just outside the greenhouse. Now, down this whole sunny, south-facing side of the greenhouse, where I'm growing my tomatoes and my cucumbers, I've got this series of pots. This is an automatic watering system called the Auto Pot. These um, systems of pots have got a reservoir in the bottom connected up with some pipe work which leads to a water butt at the end. All I've got to do every week or so is to top up this tank of water. Just literally fill the tank up completely and the water will just flow from this tank into the trays at the bottom, the green trays. They've got a little float system in them which as the water fills up the float raises, turns the water flow off, the plants use the water, the float drops down and when the water in the tray at the bottom has been used up it opens up the valve again and fills up and keeps the system self-watering. So I reckon this tank of water here will probably supply the plants here for a, a really good week, 10 days, sometimes even two weeks. But the height of the summer when the plants are fully grown and it's a really hot day, maybe I've got to top this tank up, maybe once a week, but certainly will keep the plants watered every day without me needing to do too much at all. And all I do is add some liquid feed, something like tomorite or tomato fertilizer. And when I top the tank up with water, literally I add some of this at the same time. So I've got a lovely liquid high potash feed, which is what my crops really want. And that keeps the plants watered and fed automatically. Just takes the daily chore, one of those daily chores off me. Now something else you can do in the summer to reduce the stress of the hot weather on your plants is to raise the humidity in the greenhouse. And to do that, literally every morning, once I've opened up the vents, is to damp down the greenhouse floor. I just leave a really good layer of moisture all over the floor itself. And this water will gradually evaporate as the temperature rises and that increased humidity means that there's less stress on the plants themselves. And in addition to damping the floor down, I mist the plants, just wetting all of the leaves. Plants will take up water 
when the air is dry and the conditions are hot and that flow of water, a translocation of water means the plants are taking up the water and food they need. High humidity means that the plants don't need so much water at the root, it reduces that stress. So just misting over the plants completely first thing in the morning, I find that water gradually evaporates up, increases the humidity, reduces the stress. The other thing that high humidity does is it reduces the chance of a troublesome greenhouse pest developing. There's a pest called red spider mite. Red spider mite is a tiny little mite. It will crawl over the leaves, feed on the leaves, quite often on the underside of leaves like cucumbers. You'll see mottle patterning, you'll see little webs developing and it can actually completely devastate crops, particularly things like cucumbers. But red spider mite is like a really warm, dry air. So by increasing humidity, by keeping the air moist, you actually reduce the chance of red spider mite developing. Now, plants growing in individual pots and trays can be watered by hand. But when you've got a lot of plants in the greenhouse, like I've got some strawberry plants here, I've got these in trays. I can just put some water in the top of each pot, let that drain down and leave a reservoir of water in the base for the plants to take up from the bottom on hot days. But the other thing you can do is to make a slightly more automated system. This tray, plastic tray, comes with a metal shelf. And if you use a piece of capillary matting, get this at garden centers or mail order suppliers, I'll lay this on top of the tray. I'll make a little wick, dipping the edge of the capillary matting down into the base. And keeping that base full of water means that there's a massive reservoir. Many, many pints of water in there. The wick takes the water up, keeps the matting damp. And then I can just keep things like my pots of strawberries on this matting. And they've got, again, their own reservoir of water, their own little mini automatic watering system. And the other thing that happens is you get moisture evaporating from this matting during the day, increases humidity, reduces the stress and water on the plants themselves. And also, as I said before, high humidity means less red spider mite around the greenhouse. Now you might have noticed in my greenhouse, I've got some of these yellow cards like here and I hang these up to catch flying pests, particularly white fly. That can be a troublesome pest in the greenhouse. These yellow sticky glue cards, you have to remove the paper covering on themselves and then you can hang these up wherever you want in your greenhouse. I hang these around the crops, around the side. I'm just going to put one in over here. And the yellow colour I think is attractive to white fly and the pests will fly in. I have had people warn me in the past though that this glue trap is really, really sticky. It's not selective, so even a beneficial creature could stick to it. And some people have said in the past that if their greenhouse is very open, they've had small birds come into the greenhouse and they can get stuck to the, the glue traps themselves. If you are worried, you can put some netting over your door and vents to stop the birds getting in. But I find in this greenhouse here, these are just a good extra way of trapping flying pests without me needing to spray the crops and use pesticides. I'm growing four varieties of tomato in a greenhouse this year. My favourite is Garner's Delight. Small cherry sized tomato. Lots of people say it is the very best for flavour. I can remember asking Alan Titchmarsh once what his favourite tomato was. Garner's Delight came out top of his list. Second is a variety called Shirley. Shirley is a standard greenhouse tomato. Good sized crop great to grow in a greenhouse and undercover. New one I'm growing this year is this one called Floridity, which has lovely long 
trusses of fruits. Some people say you can get up to 20, 30, even more fruits on each truss. It's a little plum shaped tomato. And in taste tests that people have done in the past, it's come out as one of the sweetest new tomatoes. It's a really good promising one. I'm looking forward to growing that one. And lastly, I've got a variety called Acron. Acron in trials produce one of the biggest crops of all. Um, that is uh, a new one I'm really looking forward to. Shirley and Garner's Delight have both got awards of garden merit as well. So four varieties of tomato all growing in these pots. Really looking forward to trying these this summer. Combination of varieties to put into salads and also to use for cooking and making tomato soups and sauces. I always grow a few cucumbers in a greenhouse and this has been one of my favourites for several years now. It's a variety called Carmen. It's an all-female cucumber which means that every flower should form a fruit and you don't get that pollination which leads to very bitter cucumber flavours. It's a full-size cucumber and I love it because it's got good disease resistance, particularly against a disease which attacks the leaves of cucumbers called powdery mildew which kills them off and you can lose the crop so early in the season if you don't grow a disease resistant variety. So I love Carmen, really decent size cucumbers. They'll get even bigger than this if you leave them on a little bit longer but I pick them when they're a decent size and it's an absolutely delicious crop. I have though become a convert to little baby cucumbers. I'll show you why. This is a variety called Nimrod. Now in the past I always thought why grow cucumbers which got little baby fruits when you could grow a cucumber which produces a decent sized fruit. Well I'll tell you why because it produces so many of them. Uh, as I say this is a variety called Nimrod produces probably at least one fruit at each leaf node as you go up the stem. And I've got here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've got a dozen fruits already developing on this crop. So it's going to produce masses and masses of these little baby cucumbers. So if, like my family, you like your cucumbers for salads, then I think this is a really, really good variety to choose. Look how generous it is. Got uh, fruits at every single node up and as soon as these are just like about the length of your hand, these are ready for, for, for picking. Beautiful little mini cucumbers, just perfect for a summer salad. And the crops just go on coming. Really generous free cropping variety in Nimrod. Very easy to grow from seed. Sow them around about March time. The earlier the better if you've got a heated propagator. You'll get a crop you can plant out, train up into the eaves of the greenhouse and give yourself pickings week after week after week. Well how about summer care of the plants that I have got in the greenhouse? Well the tomatoes and cucumbers growing up nicely. I've got some canes which I've got growing up into the ridge of the greenhouse so the crops coming up and over. You could use wires or strings or other plant supports but I've got this sort of framework of canes which I gradually tie the plants into. So just every few days I'll just get some pieces of string and where the plant is got a bit too long at the tip I just literally just gently just needs to be a loose tie not tight because you don't want it cutting into the stem of the plant itself but I just gradually just tie these down very gently so that the tip of the shoot here on this tomato is just directed towards the ridge of the greenhouse. And the other thing of course with tomatoes, as I'm sure you'll know, is that these are grown as a cordon which is a single stem. So I check regularly and see if I spot any side shoots developing and if I do find, usually it's in the node where a leaf joins the main stem, if I find any side shoots literally I'll pinch these off. There's another one here which has escaped from lower down remove that. So just remove any little side shoots. Sometimes even though you've picked them off they can regrow after a few months. So just check regularly, just go all along the plants and see if you've got any side shoots developing. 
I do like growing strawberries in pots in a greenhouse too. Now I have got a bed of strawberries outside that needs to be protected with a netted frame to stop the birds reaching the fruits. But I grow them in pots in a greenhouse and uh, by and large you can keep the birds away although sometimes they will come in the door and nibble away at the fruits. Grow them in pots, bought cold stored runners earlier in the year from a mail order fruit supplier. Planted these up into pots, growing them on my greenhouse staging and I've chosen a perpetual fruiting strawberry, sometimes known as autumn fruiting strawberries. These will start flowering in midsummer, usually about June to July time, giving you pickings through the summer and they will go on producing flowers and therefore fruits well into autumn. This is a variety called flamenco, a really good flavoured variety. One I'd thoroughly recommend for growing in pots in the greenhouse. So there you have it. Open up your greenhouse in the morning, damp down the greenhouse floor, uh, give the plants a water, top up the watering tank and reservoirs you've got, check over the plants, see if there's any problems, maybe pick off the side shoots on your tomatoes, train the tips in, and that way you'll keep your crops growing really well through the summer. Don't forget to give them some occasional food as well, particularly flowering fruiting crops with a high potash fertilizer. And there you have it, a really productive greenhouse feeding you and your family.